guys. In this video, we're going to talk about iron condors, what they are, and in what context we should be using iron condors in our trading. Now, iron condor sounds like this is a crazy advanced strategy, but it's really not. It's actually kind of simple. The only thing that's complicated about it is that it's actually a four-legged option strategy. Now, since we did talk about debit spreads and credit spreads in our past videos, we're actually already halfway there to placing an iron condor. So what exactly is an iron condor? Well, actually, an iron condor is just two credit spreads or two debit spreads. So what you're doing is you're putting a a credit spread on your call side and a credit spread on your put side, and you're creating a range and vice versa. With debit spreads, you're putting a debit spread on your call side, debit spread on your put side, and you're creating a range that you want the stock to be outside of. So that's how you get your short and your long iron condors. Your long is going to be something you're paying debit for, and you're creating a range outside. Uh, you're, you want the... You want the stock to be the outside of the range that you created, whereas a short iron condor, you want the stock to be inside of that range that you just created. So we'll go over all that. Um, but anyway, let's just start off. We're going to put on a put credit spread, okay? We're going to go to the 30 delta here, so uh, 32, close enough. What we'll do is we'll just put on a put credit spread. So um, we already know how to do this. We'll sell the 60 and we'll buy the 59, and you can see that this is going to be 22 cents, okay? Okay. So we'll go ahead and just clear that. So keep that in your back pocket, right? So we have a credit spread, uh, a bull put spread um, on our put side here at the 30 delta. We're collecting 22 cents. Um, by the way, we're in DraftKings for the April monthlies, by the way. Um, and then we'll do the same thing over here on the call side. We'll do a call credit spread and we'll do it at the 30 delta as well. So we'll go in here, we'll sell this 64 and we will purchase the 65. Now, this is 27 cents. So what we want to do to create a range, because we think that DraftKings will be above 60, and we think that it's going to, it's not going to, it's not going to die, right? I mean, it's only going to go up, but we don't think it's going to go up that much. So we think it's going to go up, but we don't think it's going to go past 64, but we don't think it's going to be get below 60. So what we're doing here is we're creating a range where we believe the stock will be and kind of stay at um, up until expiration. So we're collecting 27 cents here and we're collecting 22 cents on this put spread. And let's watch what happens when we place this on here. So selling the 60, buying the 59, our max profit here or the credit that we're receiving is actually 49 cents. So what happened there? Well, it took that 22 cents here and the 27 cents here and added them together. And that's how we create our max profit. But there's something to know because even though these are $1 wide strikes or the width of our wings here are $1 wide on each side, um, we do not add those dollars together. We add the profit or the max credit that we're receiving for each spread together, but we do not add this. So we're subtracting this from one still because it's a $1 wide or 100. Um, and we're not subtracting it from two or 200, okay? So 49 cents because 27, 22 equals 49. And we subtract that from $1, 51. That's how we get our max loss here. Now, um, going forward, how do we calculate our break evens? Well, it's the same thing as our credit spreads. Um, only it's just going to be on each side this time. So, um, you know, for our credit spread, it's you, you take our short strike and then we subtract our... Um, credit received, and that's going to be our break even. Well, you do the same thing, only you do it on both sides here. So our max profit here is 49 cents. Our credit received is 49 cents. We subtract that from our short put right here, which is 60. That gives us a break even of 59.51. You can see that's right where our green bar is. So that's our break even there. And then for the 64 call here, the 64 short call, we're actually going to take this 49 cents and we're going to add it to uh, do this. So it's actually going to be 64.49 is going to be our break even on the call side. So we need DraftKings to stay in between these two ranges, right? Or this range right here in between these two levels for us to break even or make even at least one penny on this spread. And the most that we can make, because you can't make it, you can't, um, you can't not buy something back for, or you can't make any more money on something than what you sold it for. Sorry, I butchered that. Um, <laughs> so because we're selling this for 49 cents, the most that we can ever make on this is 49 cents. So why would I be wanting to play this iron condor? We already talked about because we think the stock's going to go up. But we don't think it's going to go up a whole lot. 
And what we're doing is actually more or less, we're just kind of doubling our money here, right? So um, you can see that if we were just going to do a put credit spread, that our max loss is actually greater. Um, our delta is higher. And we want to be delta neutral. Our probability profit is higher. That's true. Our delta is higher, but maybe we want to stay as close to delta delta neutral as possible for our whole portfolio, right? Because now we're just adding long delta, and maybe we don't want to do that. And we want to collect more than this twenty two cents right here. Uh, I mean, the thing is with all these spreads. The standard is you want to try to collect one third the width of your strike. So if you're selling a one dollar wide um, put spread or iron condor or something, you want to try to collect as close to thirty three cents as possible. So for this, you'd say, well, twenty two cents, I could collect more, and I'm risking a lot, even though my win rate's higher. So that's why you would go in and you would end up selling this sixty four sixty five. Um, call spread against it, you'd be creating an iron condor. So now your max loss is lower, your max profit is higher, your probability of profit is lower, but your delta is also closer to neutral as well. So that's why you would want to go in and do this. So you're playing a theta uh, and IV contraction game. So you want IV in here to contract, you want the days to keep on passing with the stock staying in this range, and then you're going to make money um, as this stock gets closer to this expiration date, um, because that's what you're playing for. And you don't want to see really drastic swings in here or any IV. So that's why you would want to play an iron condor. Also, there's other things to know. Let's say instead of a dollar wide on this put side, we actually would go $2 wide. Let's see what happens here. Well, now our max profit is all of a sudden it went up to 65, but our max loss is now at 135. Well, we're only we're still two dollars or we're still one dollar here on the call side but we're only two dollars on this side so how do we calculate our max loss and profit like that well actually you take the larger of the wings so this is two right here two is greater than one and that's now what we're going to be subtracting everything from so we're collecting 65 cents and we're going to subtract that from that two so basically whichever however wide your wings are if you have a bigger width on one side that's the width that you're going to take and you're going to subtract your max uh your max profit or your credit received from and that's how you're going to add add up and calculate your max loss so um when putting these on these iron condors what we're looking for is an iv contraction i know we just kind of talked about that but we want to play these in a really really high iv environment so let's go to something like baidu where 20 IV rank is 23. So that's still pretty high. And we can go out to May here and let's see what we're working with in May. So we have a $22 expected move and you can do these however wide you want, but you have to be aware of your volume, just like purchasing and selling just any, like just one legged, um, one lot option. Volume is always key. Bid ass is always key. Same thing with iron condor condors because you want to be able to get in and out of these. So we, uh, we're opening up Baidu here. Let's go with the uh, the old classic one standard deviation, the 16 delta. We'll do a $10 wide here. Um, so we'll go in and then, well, 17, that's close enough. We'll sell that. And then we'll do a $10 wide on this side as well. So you can see that our max profit here is $226. We subtract that from uh, 10. That's how we're going to get our 774 max loss. Theta is actually higher in here uh, because there's more IV. Um, there's more time as well. Um, theta it, or your delta is basically more or less neutral because we place them right close as close as we could to one standard deviation because this short strike right here is 17. This is 16 here. And our probably a profit is 68%. So these are good for high IV environments, days you want the, you know, you want time to keep on continuing. Um, you might see people always trying to play these or these or strangles on during earnings because now we're creating a range because we don't really know if the stocks can go up or down, right? So especially with earnings, let's say earnings is coming up in Baidu and they're putting in a $20 expected move and we're sitting here right at 220. Uh, you know what I mean? Uh, we don't really know if it's going to go up 20 or if it's going to go down 20 or if it's going to be two times the expected move down 40 up 40 whatever um so you can just kind of create yourself a little range so then you're going to make money no matter what obviously your delta is going to change because this is going to gap up say it gaps up 20 bucks well now you're up here well you're still well within your range right uh your delta is now just going to become shorter um you know what i mean the premiums on your call side are going to be higher but your 
uh, sucking out the premium on your put side. So uh, there's just different ways in here to kind of adjust everything, but we'll go over that in a later um, video. And one last thing, we'll go over just a long iron condor. So those were short iron condors. Um, and basically it's the same exact thing, only this time we are going to be pl placing two debit spreads. So we're just gonna go ahead and do this real quick right here. So as you can see, our break evens and our green where we can make money is actually outside of that range we just created. So we're, it's, we just inversed everything. So our short strikes were in closer to each other. They were closer in the money. Now our short strikes are further out of the money on each side. And that means if, as we know from our debit spread and our credit uh, spread videos, that whichever way our short strike is facing away fr uh, from the stock, um, then that's which way we want the stock to go. So our short strikes are on the outside. So we want the stock to be outside of this to make money um, at any time. And all you're doing is you're adding this debit spread, what you're paying for this debit spread, you're adding that to this, and that's gonna be what you're paying for this uh, spread here, this strategy. So again, iron condors are great. If you're trying to create some sort of range that you want the stock to stay in, you want to do them in high IV environments. You can do them in earnings, but be careful. Um, and you might have to go to kind of to do the weeklies as well to get some good premium in there. Uh, but that's also risky. Um, when you're putting these on, always be aware of your gamma as well, because especially when you're doing the weeklies, you're going to have a higher gamma risk. Um, and you also, you can put these on, uh, I guess we didn't really go over this. So we'll go over this real quick. Um, you can put these on at whatever Delta you want, but the standard really is either standard deviation 20 or 30, but you, I mean, technically you could go in here to buy do and you say, I think this is going to go up and I'm going to create a range up here. Technically you can just come up here and you're going to sell up here. If there's volume, you can do whatever you want. Um, there's no wrong or right reason to trade. You can trade however you want. So you can kind of manipulate these iron condors to say whatever you want. Um, so see, look, I mean, our delta is, we want our delta to be higher than neutral. You know what I mean? We want to be have a nice high positive data, our delta. So you have a 10 delta right here. Uh, you can see our probability of profits down, but we created a range outside out of the money in our kind of call side here that we want the stock to go up and hit and we want it to stay up in here. So you can do how the, these however you want. You can see that you're collecting more premium when you play uh, these that way. Your max loss is lower, but you also have a way lower win rate. Uh, your theta is a little bit lower as well because there's less intrinsic or there's um, less extrinsic value to that. Um, so yeah, it's just gonna be, it's just uh, interesting uh, what you can do with these iron condors. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out. We can kind of go over them um sometime soon in uh the discord and everything and uh they're they're actually not that hard to uh, play with and to adjust they're kind of hard to defend just a little bit um as compared to like a short string or something like that um but they are not bad and they're actually a great option strategy personally i think so that was iron condors guys um Thanks for watching. Make sure to check us out on social media. We have attached the links to our socials in the description. We also have a swing trading service if you're interested. There's more information in the description below. Thanks, guys.